Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's. There we go. Cool. All right. Little laughter in the morning never hurt anybody, right? Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's. We're so glad you could join us this morning. We invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn number 448. Hymn number 448. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated for the readings. morning. Morning. It's the first reading. Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Let a sheep, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before the shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this, his generation? For his life is taken away, for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> uh, let's do the Psalms. I'll read the even ones, and the congregation read the odd ones. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I'll perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. 
the poor, poor shall, shall eat and be and satisfied, satisfied. And, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. him. May, May your heart, heart live forever. live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For, For the kingship king belongs, belongs to the Lord. Lord. He, he rules over, over the nations. nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My, My soul, soul shall live for him. him. My descendants shall serve him. They, they shall, shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and ever shall forever. be. Amen. Second reading by John. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love, and God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that loved us and sent his son to be the on time sacrifice of our sins beloved since god loved us so much we also ought to love one another no one has ever seen god if we love one another god lives in us and love and his love is perfected in us by another god's lives in us and his love is perfected in us by this we know that we abide in him and he is us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world god abides in whose comes to confess that jesus is the son of god and they abide in god so we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and, who's, and those who <coughs> abide in love abide in God, and God's abide in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because he is, because he is, so we in <laughs> this world, there is no fear in love but for perfect in cast of out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love we love because he first loved us those who say i love god and hate their brothers or sisters are liars for the for who those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God, whom they have not seen, they commented. We have from him is this, who's, who's the, bleh. those who loves God must love their brothers and sisters. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able for our gradual sequence hymn number 439, 439.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May these words move our ears to hear you, our eyes to see you, and our behavior to share you, for you alone are enough. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the fifth Sunday in the Easter season. Uh, it's part of the great 50 days between the Easter vigil and Pentecost. Uh, one of the best parts of the Easter season, liturgically speaking, so like the, the aspects of how we conduct and what we do in the Mass, is that we get all of these readings from the book of Acts. And Acts is, I think, one of the most important scriptures we as a church can have. Because Acts is about who Christians were after Jesus ascended into heaven. But before culture or empire adopted Christianity. So the book of Acts, so the book of Acts really is this testimony of Christians in a non-Christian world, something that is pretty familiar to us here in Vermont. So if we're gonna talk about Acts, I kinda have to acknowledge just how ridiculous the story of Acts is today. Not ridiculous as in I don't believe it, don't tell the bishop that, I did not say that, that is not what I meant. Um, but let's, like, let's recap what we heard, right? So today's apostolic hero, Philip, hears an angel tell him to go down this road from Jerusalem to Gaza. And and how utterly poetic it is, by the way, that scripture tells us that the road from Jerusalem to Gaza is a wilderness road. But, okay, so Philip makes his way from Jerusalem to Gaza. He goes down this road, and there's this very important Ethiopian official also making his way down this road from Jerusalem. And this official is reading Isaiah like out loud while he's in his chariot. And the Spirit of God tells Philip to go over, interrupt this guy, and invite himself on board 
his chariot. And not only does he do that, but then the Ethiopian official actually lets him join him and lets this like random stranger into his chariot. And then invites and allows Philip, this stranger, to interpret for him the Isaiah scriptures. And it is so moving, so wondrous of an, of a, an interpretation that this Ethiopian uh, official asks to be baptized in the closest running water. And then immediately after he's baptized, Philip is teleported away. In Harry Potter speak, he apparated um, to a completely different place, right? Now, I, I don't know about like what this is for you, but for me, this story is pretty fantastical um, because it, it's got more than the things that we're used to, more than things like healing or exorcism. It has teleportation, transportation, apparition, whatever you want to call it, which is not actually a super consistent thing that we hear in scriptures. So that feels super random. And then, and this is the part where like it's really uncomfortable for me, you have a guy who's in charge of a lot of money, who is an official in charge of the treasury, inviting a complete stranger into his car with him. Right? One of the reasons this story, one of the reasons this story is so important to us is because of how absurd it feels. If we, if we were honest with ourselves, how often do we actually accept wisdom given to us by strangers or in the unexpected moments? How often are we open to the miracles that are possible all around us? I love that our hero from this story is Philip. Not Philip who's one of the 12 apostles, because there is, an, there is a Philip there. There's like five Johns, six Marys, two Philips. Like we need to get new names for these people. We won't, but there's just like a lot of names. Anyway, so this is not that Philip. This is a different Philip, right? This is Philip, who is one of the seven. So we usually think of Stephen um, as being the most famous of the seven, where the, the 12 apostles are like, we anoint these, these people to go out and do things for us. And so Philip is one of those seven, right? And this happens in chapter six um, in the book of Acts. Well, and so this Philip is all about sharing the gospel, the good news, the good works of God, right? This Philip, is kind of a nobody of nobodies. We talk a lot about how the apostles were no one special until Jesus called them. And this is someone, no one special from no one specials, right? And yet, he is blessed by God in a way that we all hope for. He talks to angels and hears the Holy Spirit. And he responds to it. He honors those calls on his life. And then you have this Ethiopian official, someone who is actually pretty easy to identify with. He's a guy who is pretty well accomplished in his material or professional life. He's the treasurer or the, the official to the Candace, to the queen of Ethiopia. But also he's, he knows that there's more to spirituality that he doesn't know. Don't we all have stuff we want to believe in? Things we don't understand, times we need help understanding things? You have this very unlikely pair of semi-important, but not like top of the food chain kind of people. They're not apostles, they're not the queen. These are, in some ways, people just like us people who consider themselves part of the, the middle. Disciples, everyday workers. And yet, and yet they're open to so much more because they're open to having 
these incredible learning experiences? At what point are we willing to be curious enough to accept answers from wherever they may come? I had a leadership teacher years ago who always used to say that the world is a mirror, that every experience you have, uh, everything that you interact with in the world, everyone and everything, however they act around you, right, is actually within your sphere of understanding and is merely just a mirror of God showing you things for you to think about and examine within yourself. Now, you could very easily brush this off as intense egotism, or if you love Descartes, you would say, oh, this is totally Descartes, where everything is in the sphere of like your own perception. But he's also not wrong. We all actually experience the world through the limitations of our own eyes, our own ears, and lived experiences. That's why I keep praying that prayer for our ears to hear you, our eyes to see you, and our behavior to share you. How we interact with the world is hugely determined by us, just like it was determined by Philip and the Ethiopian official. Except instead of imposing their individual wills upon the world around them, they allowed the experiences to teach them about God. What if every comic book you read Every TV show you watched, every newscast or TikTok you paused and got curious about what God was trying to teach you in those moments. What if every single moment of your life is a moment God were teaching you something? And then, just like Philip, a second later, the moment is over and it's a new moment. How would you treat every single one of those moments? How would you learn from every one of them? St. Ignatius referred to it as God in all things. And I'm, I would be pretty safe to bet that there are that same concept, that, that that same concept exists all over Eastern religions and human, uh, humanist philosophies. What if the next time you stopped at a red light it got you to wonder how often you take time to stop and just breathe. Or the next time you ate food, you wondered how often others can't. Are we willing to be like those people from scripture who allowed God to speak into their lives and revealed important truths to them? Are we willing to be present to every moment of existence? Brendan and I saw a couple of shows on Broadway this weekend, and being down there reminded me of the lyrics to one of the most famous songs in one of the most famous musicals. 525,600 minutes, 525,000 moments so dear. 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a, measure a year? In daylights, in sunsets, in midnights, in cups of coffee, in inches, in miles, in laughter, in strife. Each of us knows that every moment there is new revelation, new information, and it is possible to see if we're willing to be open to it. Let us pray. Mighty Jesus, direct us, O Lord, that all of our intentions, our actions, and our impacts are purely in praise and service of your divine majesty, the way of love. For if you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. Be with us, we pray. Amen.
I invite us to stand up as we are able and profess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for our world in which we live and for our church to which we are called, for this congregation and for our hearing the word. Let us pray to the Lord. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, let us remember today the Church of Bangladesh. And in our Vermont prayer cycle, let us pray for Christ Church in Island Pond and Judy Castangue, Senior Warden. For Bennington County and our local community, let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving for the Bennington Fire Department and all of the volunteers who so bravely give of themselves for our safety. And for our parish of St. Peter's, we offer our prayers of thanksgiving for the building and grounds team led by Kathy Perkins, for all their tireless hours in so lovingly maintaining and improving our beloved church building and property. Are all your people who seek your truth and rejoice in serving our church. You have called, O oh God, persons of varieties of gifts to serve your church. Let us lift up in prayer Archbishop Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Shannon, Father Jeremy, all our lay ministers, and all of our devoted and eager friends who are in training to soon be serving your church. Give us the grace listen to, and to tell the story of your love and faithfulness. Let us pray for all nations and leaders of the world that wisdom and integrity may prevail in our suffering world, for regions torn by conflict and chaos, and for all victims of war and oppression. We pray for ourselves and all others who have the ability to choose peace over division, both in our daily lives and among nations, and people of all politics, races, ethnicities, faiths, and identities. Let us open our hearts in prayer for all victims and their loved ones 
of gun violence and hate crimes. Anything we can know of or imagine. Let us pray for the wisdom to care for our delicate and wondrous earth. And let us also pray for all animals suffering as a result of neglect or greed. May the order you originally established be once again restored to the whole world through the intercession of the glorious Virgin Mary, the prayers of St. Francis, and the merits of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us the grace to see our earth and all animals as precious gifts from you and treat them with ardent respect, for they are your creation. Let us remember all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially all those on our prayer chains here at St. Peter's and also at St. James. Let us continue our prayers for recovery for John Williams and for Rico Donatelli. And let us offer our compassion and love to our neighbors who may be alone and in need. We might endure to the end and gain our very souls. Let us pray for the faithful who have gone before us, that we may follow the example of their lives and be reunited with them in the joy of everlasting life. Let us especially remember all those in whose names the altar flowers are given on most Sundays, Louise Philput, John Fry, and all of our beloved who we miss every day. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. At this time, you may offer your own prayers or thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. And if you wish, come forward and light a candle. as one loving community of faith. Let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving for our parish of St. Peter's and our constellation with St. James Church, our presence in this community, the grace and forgiveness of God, and our love and acceptance of each other. O oh Lord, help us each day to stand for love, for healing, for the good, for the diverse unity of the body of Christ and all creation. Amen. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked for faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And whatever posture is most penitent to you, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Jesus straightened up and said to the woman who sinned, Woman, where are they? Is there no one to condemn you? She said, No one, sir. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, you are beloved. 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 I expect to see all of that enthusiasm at coffee hour. <laughs> I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. As you arrived, you were given a token. In addition to what you might normally give, we invite you to place that token in the plate with a prayerful offering of yourself to God. It could be a promise of time, talent, treasure, or resolution. It could even be a prayer of desperation or thanksgiving, a gift of your vulnerability to God. Hymn number 304 is the offertory.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with James and Peter and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from the kingdom. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It is the tradition of the Episcopal Church and of St. Peter's that communion is offered in both kinds. Uh, to receive the sacrament of bread and wine, either extend one hand to receive just the bread, um, or to receive just the bread and then drink from the chalice that Vicky will hold, or uh, place one hand on top of the other, extending both hands, uh, for the bread that I'll intinct into a chalice that Ian will hold. Um, if you're not receiving communion, uh, cross your arms uh, that, you're, that you might receive a blessing as all are invited to come forward. And gluten-free wafers are available. Uh, just ask. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remind you that every single minute, every single second, every single moment is a moment with God. Amen. I invite you to relax for a couple of the announcements this morning. Um, the first is that we have a uh, youth acolyte uh, training this morning that um, is planned to be right after the service, but I feel like there will be a riot if I don't allow them access to the donuts first. So um, we'll do it about 15 minutes after coffee hour begins. That They're nodding their heads. Yes, there will be a riot if I don't. Yes. So uh, 15 minutes after ca coffee hour begins, we'll do the youth acolyte training uh, here at the high altar. The second is there are so many things in a service that make it wonderful, from the organists to the singing ministers to the readers to the acolytes to the welcomers and ushers. It's all actually really easy. It looks like it may not be easy, but it's, it's actually really easy. And the reason is because things go wrong all the time. The sound didn't even work this morning, and then it did. The only thing that's perfect is Jesus. The only thing that's perfect is... Oh, come on. The only thing that's perfect is... There we go! Awesome, okay. Everything else is just doing our best. So do your best with us. Our closing hymn for this morning. Uh, use the, if that's on, yeah. 
Is it on? Yeah. yeah okay. So, thank you. The Bennington Community Cafe has been operating out of St. Peter's now since the end of November, and in that time, our number of guests has grown exponentially, and the number of volunteers coming to offer their time for service continues to grow. Last month, we started a project of card making in honor of Volunteer Appreciation Week, which was this past week. Uh, and so we have a card for St. Peter's as a thank you for the use of this space, but also for all of those of you who have contributed in large ways and small um, to this service that we provide. Um, it's signed by many of our guests who came forth willingly and eagerly to sign it. So thank you all. Hospitality. Our closing hymn is three hundred and seventy nine.
in peace first to coffee hour and then to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.